folks. Welcome to the Week Ahead Commentary Podcast. This is Bob Desmond recording from our Contrarian Trading Studios in New York. What we're going to talk about this week are our views of how we closed out the week on the major averages. Then we're going to segue over and into our positions, how we stand with those trades. Will we add? Will we sell then we'll focus in on our focus stocks those stocks that we find most attractive going into the new trading week and if you want the full video experience of the week ahead commentary become a member 14 day free trial offer join us in our new members slack community and i look forward to engaging with you there let's get started okay folks welcome to the week ahead commentary this is bob desmond and it is the 28th of November. Let's begin with, as we normally do, the review of the markets on a closing basis, meaning what was the quality of the close in the bond market, in the stock market, and from there we can divine which direction we want to take. Do we want to be long, short? Do we want to stay flat? How aggressive do we want to be in either direction? So uh, let's begin with bonds. Had you asked me before I pulled up this chart, I would have said that uh, the TLT closed at the lows of the week. I didn't watch the bond market all that closely yesterday. But uh, as you can see, we saw a rally in the back half of the week off the lows. We did hold a breakout point, meaning we broke out the week of the 16th, a down week last week, sending yields up higher, yet we rallied off the lows of the week. So... For all intents and purposes, bond prices are poised to move higher unless, of course, we take out last week's lows and then all bets are off. But if we do press on higher above 161 spot 54 on the TLT, expect bond yields to drop and expect technology stocks, including the triple Qs, to rally. Taking a look at bond yields weekly basis. They ticked up last week but failed to recapture support. They failed to hold the highs of the week. This is not a broken chart yet. So the jury's out. So a big question mark next to bond prices and bond yields going into the new trading week. And that's a problem. Where there is no question is when we pull up a chart of the tips, TIP, the symbol, weekly view, you could see that we had a big week last week, up over a third of a percentage point. That's a big move. And I, I hate to repeat myself, but for those that are new, the reason why people buy tips, and it's not people, it's institutions, mostly, that buy tips, they buy tips to protect themselves against inflation. But all we hear is that there is no inflation. Yet, the tips are sending a far different signal than what the narrative is out of the Federal Reserve. The U.S. dollar, weekly view. We called for a break in the U.S. dollar last week. This week, we got the break in the U.S. dollar. This is a significant breakdown. And I think that we're only going lower. And for those out there, that are thinking that the gold trade is over. The gold trade has just begun. This is a pause that refreshed. We'll go to that chart in a moment. Now, when you take a look at your RSI rounding top, you never want to see this. Not below 50. You never want to see it. And when I say 50, I mean the neutral line at 50. So, whenever we get this, normally... It doesn't bode well for the equity, the currency, the bond, whatever. Cupcakes, it doesn't matter. This rounding action here is a signal that momentum is waning and waning dramatically. In fact, momentum when he had a counter trend rally was so weak, we couldn't even cross above the 50 line on the stochastics nor on RSI. And take a look at this now. This is the outcome of when I say it's not going to end well. This is not going to end well. This is just beginning. What we saw from August 
through to September was a counter trend rally, which is now on the verge of being taken out. And you're going to see a continuation breakdown on the U.S. dollar. I can't be more bearish on this currency, the VIX. We called for a filling of the gap on the VIX. This is a weekly chart at the 1999 level. The low of the week last week was 1951. So we have filled that gap. Do I think that we go lower here? I'm not quite sure. There's a new support level. We did manage to close back above 20. If I had to hazard a guess, I would say odds favor VIX bears. We are seeing a higher low on an ultimate oscillator. But your Stokes is still very, very weak. Let's go to a daily chart. Daily chart, weak. I think the next next price target, if we do take out the lows of last week, is 18.41. I will say this, that uh, Stokes are hooking up. RSI is still weak. Moving on to equities. The Dow Transports. Uh, weekly chart. We're seeing signs of topping action. We were up last week. Yes, it was a great week. But... We know that. That's the obvious. What we're looking for is the not-so-obvious. And we've seen three consecutive up weeks of topping action. Week one, two, last week three. Volume has dropped off consecutively. So we're losing volume. We are very long in the tooth here, and we are seeing profit-taking daily chart. RSI holding support. Price action fairly weak, but no break, holding 12,500 volume, was obviously light yesterday. The Dow Jones Industrial Average, continuation breakout last week, up 2 spot, 2-1%. Indicators still look strong, RSI, Stokes, going the right direction. Price, good, a little bit of topping action, but we negated the prior week's bearish reversal bar. Volume was obviously light this past week. The S&P 500, Weekly chart, very strong week, up 2 spot, 27%. Uh, you can see that the higher lows on Stokes, you saw follow through, uh, very powerful. I think that we're going to move up higher here. I think we're moving lower on VIX, higher on S&P 500. Uh, MACD, very extended. Uh, volume, very light. So, you know, looking at these charts, you know, as you proceed into Christmas, I think we're going to get higher highs. Probably going to see some sector rotation. I'll talk to you about that why in a moment. Uh, IWM weekly chart. Uh, very strong week. Up nearly 4%. On the month, we are up over 20%. But going back to that weekly chart, we're very extended here, folks. So we're going to be looking to add to our short position very aggressively, fairly soon, of the small caps. Daily chart. But prior to doing that, I think we're going higher. So no rush quite yet to go add into shorts. But when we do, it's going to be an aggressive short. Now, looking at the Qs, the trip Qs weekly chart, uh, what I think is going to happen here is that you're going to see a pause in the cyclical names. You're Exxon Mobiles, your U.S. Steels of the world. They've come a long way. They're a bit extended. Your small caps are very extended. At some point in time, they're going to pause, correct, pull back, do the right thing as it's supposed to do. But I think what's setting up here, is, especially if we get a move lower on yields, I think that technology is getting ready to break out. So we'll be looking to add long to technology. This is a chart of the Triple Q's weekly time frame. Take note of the breakout on RSI, higher lows on Stokes. We have broken out on price two weeks ago. We retested, actually three weeks ago, retested once, twice last week. The third time was a charm. We had a follow through. So very bullish setup here. Daily chart, continuation move up higher late yesterday. Uh, Stokes looked rock solid. We had a triangle formation which had set up. We had broken out. RSI looking good. So the Qs looking good. The banks very extended. 
Uh, I think it was fellow member Justin who was asking about the banks. When is it time to get short? You know, I think they may take a pause. I don't know whether or not I would want to short the banks. Not quite yet anyway. Maybe drill, drilling down to a daily chart will help change my mind, but I don't think so. Uh, we are very extended relative to the third standard deviation Bollinger Band in red daily chart. Before we leave the daily chart, take note of your RSI and your Stokes moving up higher. Daily chart, uh, very strong. Yes, it was a down day uh, the past couple of days, but it's consolidation. So I think they're going to eke out another up move, but the weekly chart is very, very extended. So I would not initiate a new trade here. Far too much risk and not enough reward. Technology broke out last week. XLK on our watch list, especially moving into the holiday season. So here's your breakout on RSI, breakout on Stokes, breakout on price. You have a trifecta of all good stuff. So it looks like technology is going to take the reins and lead this market up higher. The semis in Fuego, very extended on MACD. Daily chart, continuation move higher. Yesterday, semis are probably going up higher. LABU, what a monster move last week. I know uh, Franklin, hopefully still long on this. I think we were right next to that $86 per share price target. So we closed at $83.41, looking very good. Daily chart, beautiful move higher yesterday. Normally, I wouldn't quote the volume on an abbreviated day, but just be careful here. It was very light volume, and they moved it over 10% in a day. Energy, another monster week last week, up over 8.5%. We did hit resistance. We did back off, and we'll probably pull back further. We've come a long way very, very fast, and I suspect we'll get a correction. Daily chart, 38 is support level number one on XLE. 36 bucks a share. If we get a nasty pullback, that would be a nice entry point. Oil, monster move last week. Up over 6.5%. And it appears as though we're going to go higher. And if the dollar continues to break down as it is, brother, look out below. Uh, for the dollar and load up your, your gas tanks now and your home heating oil tanks. Let's take a look at home heating oil out of curiosity. Because last I looked, it was ripping up higher. Here's a chart. Nice breakout. So the trend, oh, look at this. What a monster move last week. I think we're going up to, uh, let's draw a trend line. I'll throw out a number on home heating oil. We're looking at a buck 70 to a buck 80 on uh, home heating oil. We moved through resistance last week. So load up on that home heating oil. Gold. I had a horrible, horrible week last week. It looked as though it was going to hold 1850. It did not. This is a butt ugly chart. We did hit support at 1788, but it failed to hold. So let's move this support level down a bit, down here. Uh, I think that's 1760 is probably where we're going to move to. Actually, we did hold uh, 1788. I think that we're probably going to move lower anyway. But take note of the uh, stochastic. I mean, it is really, really oversold. Let's throw the trend line down here to illustrate. You know, we've been lower in the past, but keep in mind that when you're using your Stokes on a weekly time frame, you want to put, you know, prior periods into context. So right now, even though this is a weekly chart that's a monster, ugly chart, remember what the quarterly chart looks like. All right? We're still in a major bull run. Yes, we were extended. Yes, we're pulling back. But unlike prior periods where we had extreme oversold levels on your stochastics, we were in either A, a bear market, or B, a consolidation, allowing for that sell-off. I don't think we're going to get the same this time. Could be wrong. Two positions. GDXJ broke support last week. 
We did add. We got into the add more to the good price. Have we seen the lows? I'm not sure. I think we may need to sell some covered calls in this position. We really need to hold 48 bucks a share. We don't want to see it close down below that point. If we do, it's going to get real, real, real fast. Daily chart. Yesterday was a very good day. They tried to take it down along with gold. GDXJ wasn't having any of that. It did open down, reverse the close up. Not only did it close up, it flashed an outside reversal day. So I think that will probably move up higher. And there was an, an assassination of a nuclear scientist, a lead Iranian nuclear scientist. He was their lead guy. And you're going to see tensions ratchet up over in uh, the Persian Gulf. And that could keep a bid under gold prices, along with the U.S. dollar for that matter, when you have geopolitical risk. But GDXJ looking good, price target about 51 bucks a share, short term. Gold money eked out again last week. Bullish reversal bar. I'm not liking these stokes. Rounding top. I wouldn't be a buyer here. Calmain Foods eked out again last week. Spinning top formation. You know, these are just not sexy stocks right now. Nobody wants gold. Nobody wants food stocks. They want cyclical names. They want these EV stocks. So no reason to go adding more here right now. You're just parking cash and non performing asset. I think it goes higher. But we'll wait for a breakout before we go adding any more. Silver, horrible week last week. Stopped its support, 37.50. I think we're going lower here. Probably to 35 bucks a share. Think about it. Silver has been halved. So if you liked it back in if you liked it back in uh, July, you gotta love it right now. So we'll wait for that big reversal day and we'll go adding more. Ideally a reversal week. This is a daily chart. Uh, gap down yesterday along with gold. No reason to go buying it right here, right now. Uranium, a very good week last week. We were up over four and a third percent. Stopped at resistance. I think we're going to press higher here. Daily chart, we attempted to break out Thursday, excuse me, Friday. I keep forgetting it was Thanksgiving. And we were rejected. Indicators still look good. We'll remain low. Facebook weekly chart, I'm torn here. Good price action, horrible stoke action. Take note, rounding top. Not good, but good price action. That trumps the Stokes. Volume, well, it's an abbreviated week again, so we're not going to read too much into volume. Uh, daily chart, I think we're breaking out. We had uh, broken out a few days ago. Retest one, retest two. I think we're breaking out higher on uh, Facebook. U.S. Steel, of which we are short. We did not go adding more yesterday. I wanted to see 15 to 1550. Wasn't to be. Maybe we'll get it on Monday. Uh, last week, U.S. Steel was up 33%. Talk about a love affair with cyclicals. But they can correct just as hard as they crash up. They can crash down. Now, I'm not predicting a crash here. I'm just predicting a correction. We closed out the week last week well above the third standard deviation ball in your band. We did close above resistance at 1443 at 1455. There's that 1550 mark up here. Volume was very good especially for an abbreviated week, daily chart. So yesterday, we eked out a gain, but this is uh, this is topping action. This is a spinning top formation, filled candlestick. Last time we had one of these was back here. The following day was no bueno. Prior to that, here, this is just off the top of my head. There may be more. Here, back on June the 16th, next day, no bueno. Not good stuff. So I'm expecting a pullback here, and we'll look to book profits and move to the sidelines. And maybe we can even get long. I like U.S. Steel longer term. Emerging markets, the EDC, up nearly 6% on the week last week. A bit extended, but the dollar's breaking. China's doing quite well, despite the supply chain shift. We're going to talk more about that in a moment. But uh, EDC looking very good here. 30% of the EDC is China. So be forewarned. So we'll remain long. Look to add. Let's check out a daily chart. A little bit of resistance. But I think emerging markets, they're going to be a place to be in 2021. BRZU, we closed at 97.50. We're up nearly 11.5% on the week. Very good price action. I think we're going higher here, especially with oil prices rising. Brazil being a major oil producer. And that it is it for positions. Let's move on to our watch stocks. The first chart up as our watch stocks, or ETF in this case, uh, the EPI Wisdom Tree Ear India Earnings Fund. We've spoken about this one as recently as yesterday. Uh, so far in the month, this is a monthly chart. 
we're up nearly 14%. I think that this is just the beginning. We're very close to breaking out above all-time highs. Let's drill down. Let's go to a daily chart. They keep gapping it up day after day after day. Solid, solid rally here. So this is one where it's not a, a, a swing trade. It's an investment along with VNM. That's the Vietnam ETF. Another chart that we're watching is Twilio, weekly chart. Very close to a breakout here on a weekly time frame. We had a nice pause. Stokes looking really good. RSI looking really good. We hooked up last week on Ultimate Oscillator. Higher lows. I think we're breaking out on Twilio. Daily chart, really nice setup here. A little cup action. I don't think we're going to get a downward sloping handle. I think we're just going to move up higher. We've already broken out. Really solid chart. Nothing not to like here. Twilio is probably one of my favorites going into the week as a swing trade. Intercontinental Exchange. We're no strangers to ICE. We have uh, traded this in the past and treated it as well. And it appears as though we are about to break out. The commodity trade is back on. No breakout yet, but I think that a breakout and a close above 105 spot 04, it's game on to the long side. Daily chart, very strong week last week. Stokes looking good, RSI looking good, very strong. The Venect Video Gaming and Esports ETF, ESPO, ESPO, the symbol, weekly chart. Very close to a breakout here. We flashed a bullish key reversal bar last week. Daily chart. Clean breakout. I would love to see a retest of the breakout point on Espo. I think it goes up higher. And that, folks, is it for this week. I hope to catch you tomorrow night on Southern Night Futures Live. Don't forget to enter your symbols on the stock chart request page. And I will talk to you soon. Be well.